Jul på Vesterbro, Westbridge Christmas, episode 18, Højt belagte håndnødder, which I'm not sure how to translate into English. Um, it's a, it's slang for a beat down. And yes, thoughts, spoilers for these first 18 episodes, another episode I love, though I will be discussing the problematic elements. Let's dive right in. So yeah, um, quite enjoy Stuart trying to make excuses for, you know, oh, you know, they're they're not having sex. They are jumping on the bed. That's why we can hear the springs. And Anna says, you know, I'm coming. Or here, yeah, here I come. And the, the yeah, Stuart's like, they're playing hide and seek. He's done counting to, to ten. And he's saying, here I come. And then Anna says, don't bite me in the balls. And yeah, Stuart cannot pretend any longer. And <laughs> I'm quite fond of the, the joke with this is not what it looks like, because very frequently it is what it looks like. And yeah, the <laughs> I appreciate Anna admitting, I, I guess it is exactly what it looks like. And yeah, um, Stuart starts beating people out of his frustration with them, which becomes a theme for the episode, though he does also beat the scouts who did nothing. Let's see. And yeah, we get a misogynistic joke about, you know, oh, Vivian must be a prostitute, and, you know, Stuart hopes she got paid, and yeah, <laughs> with the with the scouts we see the other end of the the spectrum of, of child acting, these these are, are able to not just smile, you know, yeah, constantly as, as they're working with their, their idol, but instead, they just look really, really sad. Which I mean, I guess it works with the, like they're they're collecting donations. So you know, I I was a scout. I know some of them were really, really unhappy to be doing that. So yeah, and <laughs> somehow he assumes that they're also there to have sex with the Vivian, and so he he beats them, and they do a really good job because the thing is. Like, as soon as, you know, there's there's just a little bit of, of distance between the camera and, you know, and you have the, the glass, which is not, like, it's, I forget what it's called in English, but it's, it's not the kind of glass that you can very easily see through. Smoked glass, is that it? You know, so, yeah, it does just enough to hide so that he can, you know, act out beating them without them actually being in any kind of danger of getting hurt by it. And Danny shows up and you know he's like why did you beat the scouts dad? Did they sing again? And yeah Danny is the only person that Stuart is frustrated with that he does not beat in this episode. And Let's see the yeah and and you know you you could say it feels a little like you know what what was the point with Danny coming home and saying you know Randy isn't taking him back when like a minute later she shows up and says she's taking him back but the the point is that Stuart spends this first chunk of the episode thinking. <clears throat> that the two of them are not back together. And when he does see Andy, you know, she angers him. Though, you know, his obviously his reaction is completely disproportionate. So, you know, he, he barely registers that there's good news in the midst of all the bad news. I mean, the song is sort of sweet. Like, the... You know, for for all the references to prostitution, which are we're supposed to take as as a bad thing, not just you know, I mean, in reality, sex work is work. 
Um, and, and all the references to them doing drugs and such. But I, I do quite appreciate that, you know, from the two of them having sex, you know, he got chlamydia and cooties. He would still believe in cooties, honestly. And, you know, you have the line of, Randy sings, you know, this is, um, this is as sweet as breakfast that melts in a spoon. So, yeah, the, I, I forget what it's, which, which one it is, but that's one of the, yeah, there's a, there's some drug that you melt in a spoon or something along those lines. And Stuart does not drink the beer from the advent calendar, which, you know, that might have cheered him up a little bit, cooled him down a little bit, but instead he needs the, the paper from, yeah, because they're out of paper, which, you know, that's also, that's, a lot of people get frustrated when the, the toilet paper is, is out, and, yeah, he's, and, and I like, you know, Randy starts saying, Danny, I think that, and then Stuart unleashes a torrent of, you know, not all of it is swear words, but like, he's, yeah, very negative words. And yeah, brings up, you know, can you believe we're out of toilet paper? And Randy says, can't you just shit on a, a glass table while it's being sh recorded on home video, like at Tove? Which I appreciate. We saw in earlier episodes, like, he would be like, that's that's not a nice thing to say. In earlier episodes, he wouldn't, like, threaten her, much less actually physically assault her. So, yeah, she thinks that that's okay to say. She doesn't realize yet that he's angry. You know, honestly, Danny, it would have been easy enough for, for him to, you know, before the, the song gets too far, you know, just... Once she comes in, you know, I'm glad you're back. We gotta be, you know, my dad's on the warpath. You know, we gotta, you know. Ah, crap. Is that an... He's angry. Crap. I, I feel like warpath might be, like, offensive to, to Native Americans. Yeah. Did, did not mean to. I, I grew up with a lot of these things being used so, so frequently in the mainstream. Not making excuses, I'm explaining. And the, yeah, um, let's see. So, so yeah, he he punches Randy and then goes to, to get the money. And Kifia says, you know, I'll pay you after Christmas. Which, I mean, if he's going to be blowing up stuff, um, if, if he's going to be in the, the hot dog stand, I mean, I guess he's lying, but... <clears throat> Hmm. Yeah, you know, he's he says it's going to take time to to have the the um uh, what do y'all call it? like currency exchange, I guess. Um, you know, so that you can have Danish crowns. And and uh, you know, Stuart says no, money now. And the the uh, yeah, you know, he he hands him the it's like what is this monopoly money? Which is so offensive. And then you know, Kefia answers Dina, which you know I, I I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce that in in English, but but yeah, that's the you know that's that currency. And the thing is, in Danish, the, the that pronunciation sounds like he's saying, "You asshole." So, so yeah, Stuart's like, don't call me an asshole, I'm telling you right now, and the, let's see, yeah, also beats the, be, yeah, beats, hits Kefia, and, let's see, then he goes to the, yeah, goes, goes back upstairs, we get the transphobic joke about Randy being, so masculine that she technically counts as a guy. <laughs> and she put a, a tampon up her nose, which, like, I'm pretty sure that's not the, the best way to actually handle that. But, like, Andy is like, if part of me is bleeding, I put this up there. That's, you know. And <clears throat> Stuart does actually try 
to calm back down. You know, he's got he's he's putting a, a ship in a bottle. And the the yeah, you know, Danny's like, ah, oh, so so smart when and, and he mispronounces several words, you know, he's the the you know, sitting there and in inviting <laughs> And the, the, yeah, and asks a very logical question. Did Anna teach you that? And he breaks the, the bottle with his, with his bare hand, B-A-R-E, and, you know, yeah, gets really angry and almost hits Randy again, even though, yeah, she just, you know, he's like, don't use that kind of language. And she's like, all he said was Anna. And that almost has him hit her again, because the, just hearing the name, you know. And, and that's the thing, like, Danny and Randy have no idea about that. Uh, you know, what, what we have here is a failure to communicate. And, yeah, uh, Greta shows up, and the, the thing with, you know, Greta's cuisine... You know, it's like exotic. How is it exotic that you have a cousin? No, it's French. You know, from from Paris. Maybe you've heard of it. And and yeah, Stuart makes a really good point. My customers don't speak French. You know, they're they're going to buy a hot dog. They're not there for a you know language foreign language lesson. You know, so just. And, and, yeah, you know, in his anger, he cancels their agreement, which is also something, you know, he's been getting increasingly angry at her over the last several episodes because of her demands, which, you know, her being a landlord, yeah, she's, she's being an asshole. It kind of comes with the territory. If there exists a nice landlord out there, I'm guessing it's because they're now an ex-landlord. I, I, it is pretty impossible to not be a complete asshole when being a landlord. And, you know, he's he's in the middle of, of, you know, yelling at her. And then there's a knock at the door. He goes, answers the door, and it's Igor, and he's, like, got the Kalashnikov, you know, pointed directly at his face. <laughs> and Stuart just grabs it, Smacks him with the, you know, hits him with the with the butt of the the gun, closes the door and finishes the rant at at Greta, which very funny, very honest Madison, just yeah. And yeah, she you know she also does not approve of the the money not being Danish crowns, and says some really, really racist shit, which makes it incredibly satisfying that he hits her. You know, you shouldn't hit a woman, and, and you certainly shouldn't hit someone with glasses. Uh, you should use a bat instead. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, the, the speaker comes on and, and says, you know, what's going to happen now that Stuart beat this, this, and this person? And the the and then Stewart threatens the speaker, who at this but let's keep in mind at this point is a disembodied voice. Like he wouldn't know where to to hit. This is like that time that he picked a fight with an invisible person, like in the live show. But the yeah you know and and yeah he threatens him, and the speaker even apologizes. Like this is this is I think this might be the only time. At least it's the only time so far that. The speaker is actually the one who's like, you know, like usually someone else will interrupt him and she, he'll be like, shh, and they'll be like, okay, sorry, you know, but this time he's actually apologizing. So, you know, that is the, the, the extent of Stuart's fury even intimidates the speaker.